So how did we group the animals into two main groups? The vertebrates and invertebrates. What are invertebrates? The animals that do not have a vertebral column or a backbone. The vertebrates are the animals that have a vertebral column or a backbone. So in the first section we discuss the different groups under invertebrates. Now we are going to discuss the groups under vertebrates. So main vertebrate groups. To understand that again you have an assignment in your textbook. So this is the assignment. Observe the given pictures of different vertebrate animal species. So again here they have told you that these are vertebrates. So you don't have to worry all of them have a vertebral column or a backbone. Classify them using different criteria. So that is what you have to do. Now you are familiar with that process. You have to look at the organisms carefully. Try to identify similar properties and then you have to classify them. So now let's look at the organisms. What is the first one? Now just look at the organisms here. Bluefin tuna. So they have different names but there are different types. Now when we say bluefin tuna, you know tuna is a fish. So you can see it has certain features. Then the turtle, you can see the turtle here. Now the fish is different from turtle. Then there is the crocodile. Common, comoran. Comoran, it's a bird. So you can identify that as well. Then what is this? The toad. You can see the toad. A hawk, that is again another bird. Then a bat. Now what is this? This is similar to, looks like a common cormorant or a hawk because it can fly but it is a different type of vertebrate. These two are different types. I mean they two belong to one group. The bat belongs to a different group. Then we have the chimpanzee and the salamander. So have you all seen all these animals? I am sure you would have seen at least most of them. You know what fishes are tuna, then you know a turtle, a crocodile and you would have seen different birds and common cormorant and a hawk you would have seen, a toad or at least you would have seen a frog, then you have seen a bat, a chimpanzee and salamander. Salamander sometimes you may not have seen the exact animal but most of y'all might have seen it. So even if you haven't seen it you can look at them closely and you can try to classify them. So what are the features we can use to classify them? We did this before also. Now look at the first two organisms. Now blue tin, fin tuna and turtle they usually live in water. Or like say bluefin tuna, it has to live in water. Fish you know, they have to live in water. But the turtle, crocodile, they come to the land but they go to the water also. So they need both these environments or they use both those environments for living. Then what about these birds? Now all three types, this bird, that bird and the bat. Bat I told you is not a bird but those can fly. Now although they fly, so where do they live? They usually live on trees or like uh, on top of a mountain or a hill like that. They live at a higher elevation. Now whereas these three, the toad, salamander, chimpanzee, they are usually terrestrial. Even the chimpanzee can climb the tree. So like that their habitat is different. So again like we did before, if we try to classify them, we can group them into or based on different properties. So you can think of the habitat. The habitat of the organism whether it's aquatic, terrestrial or in terrestrial the different habitats. Then what can we see? 
you can look at the limbs or the legs. Now here you can see turtle has limbs, crocodile has legs, then even the birds they have legs but two legs, then frogs have limbs, chimpanzee it has legs, this also has legs, only the bat doesn't have the legs. So based on limbs also, fish also doesn't have legs, it has the fins. So based on the types of appendages, you can classify them. Then we already discussed the presence of wings for flying. So based on the wings, we can classify them. Then if you look at these animals, now this one has a shell. Whereas the crocodile, you can remember, it has like very strong kind of, very dry kind of skin. So nature of skin, whereas the toad will have a very slimy skin, wet, moist skin. Then the birds, they have feathers, again dry feathers. Then the chimpanzee has hair over the skin or hair on the skin. So all those are different properties and different characteristics that you can easily identify. So even the presence of uh, let's say uh, scales or hair, all these come under nature of skin. So like this we can use many different features. So I told you all before also if I ask the whole class to classify these organisms based on different criteria, each one will have a different classification. So that is also useful but that is not the standard classification. You all can put different animals into different uh, groups based on different characteristics. So, but that will not give you the proper understanding of organisms. So, that is why we are using a systematic scientific method of classifying organisms. So, that is what we are going to do now. So, you all can understand all of them have a vertebral column. So, they are all vertebrates but they differ in their characteristics or features. So, because of that, we have to classify them or group them into different groups. We will look at those groups now. Now you can classify vertebrates based on different criteria. That is what we discussed now. So you know to classify. Vertebrates can be scientifically classified depending on their common features. So this is the important thing. Now we are going to scientifically classify them. So under this scientific classification, there are five groups that you need to know. Under vertebrates, there are five groups. The first one is pisces or pisces. Those are the pisces. Pisces. Group pisces. Then we have the second group, amphibia. I will explain each group one by one. Pisces, amphibia. Then we have the reptilia. After reptilia, the fourth group is aves. And the fifth one is Mammalia. So, pieces, amphibia, reptilia, aves, and mammalia. So, pieces are usually called fishes. Amphibia is known as amphibians. Reptilia are known as reptiles. Aves are usually birds. And mammalia is mammals. So now let's discuss each group one by one. So the first group, pieces. Now when we say pieces, I said they are the fishes. So the group name is pieces 
or Pisces. Now these are the fishes. So here you are given some examples of fishes. Now look at all of them. Now the first one is tilapia, then we have the skate, shark, bluefin, tuna. Now these three, the tilapia, shark and bluefin tuna, they look similar. So you know immediately when you are given these three fishes, you will know, okay, this is a fish. You may not be able to identify them individually. Don't worry about that type of identification. We don't know each and every fish. We don't know the name of each and every fish. But you can identify that it is a fish. But now look at the skate. Like skate, there are rays. Now they are somewhat, this is like a kite. So this is different from these other fishes. But still it is a pieces. So that comes under the same group. So you have to remember all these examples. Tilapia, skate, shark and bluefin tuna. The group of animals well adapted to live in water. That is very important. They are well adapted. That is also important. How do we say well adapted? Now look at the shape. Now this side and this side are somewhat pointed or tapering thin. But this part of the body, now if you look at all the shapes, they have this particular body shape. The middle part is round, it's broad. It doesn't have to be always round, it can even be flat, but it's broad. But the two ends are tapering. So they can swim through, they can move through the water easily. And this is known as a streamlined body. Now this is called a streamlined body. So all of these fishes have a streamlined body shape. Even this has. Now if you look at the real organism, although it has these large fins, those uh, triangle like shaped, if you really look at the body shape, they do have a streamlined body shape. So that's easy for them to swim through the water. And then you can look at these structures. Now you can see this structure that is a tail fin. Now here you can see this has a different type of tail fin. This has another type of tail fin. This has a different shape. But still they all have fins. Now here you can see the other fins, the additional fins they have. So all these animals, they have fins. So that is also to help them swimming, to turn, to balance. So all that is the adaptation. So the group of animals well adapted to live in water. One main thing, streamlined body, then they have fins and also they have other features. We are going to discuss them now. So all that to live in water, well adapted. So the examples, some fishes are tilapia, skate, shark, bluefin tuna, even seer, gold strip sardine and sprat. So these are also fishes. The pictures are not given to you but the seer fish, gold stripped sardine and sprat. Those are also fishes but you can see they are of different sizes. Now normally the shark, skate, those are large. Shark is very large whereas the sprat is very very tiny. Sprat is about this much whereas the shark is very very large. So the size is different. Their shape is slightly different. That is why you can identify them. But their basic features, the streamlined body, the fins, all those are same. That is why we classify them as pieces. So can you all understand now? Now remember the example. When we look at the features, you should relate them to the examples given here. So now I am going to move on to the next slide where we have the features of pieces. Now see, body is invariably
invariably streamlined. Invariably. It doesn't vary. Invariably streamlined. I told you the meaning of streamlined body. This is a streamlined body. Broad at the middle, pointed towards the tapering ends. So this is an invariably streamlined body. Now this actually gave us an idea. People made boats, they made ships. Now just think of the shape of a ship or a boat. That also has this shape, the streamlined shape. So that it's easy to go through the water. So streamlined body and invariably streamlined body. So this feature helps them to swim through water. So they are well adapted to live in water. And the body is covered with scales. Now if you look at the body, now I'm sure now some of you all as we discussed before also, some of you all eat fish. So you would have seen someone bringing fish to your house. So then you would have observed these scales. Some of you all don't eat fish but I am sure you would have visited the zoo or an aquarium. So obviously at least you would have seen a fish tank. So then you would have seen a fish no. So you would have noticed these scales. So one thing streamlined body. Line body. Then they have scales. Right? So scales are they are in pieces. Animals belonging to the group pieces or fishes. So scales are there. The body is covered with scales. It's completely covered with scales. Then they have fins. Now they have this tail fin. The shapes are different. You saw before also, it can be like a triangle shape, it can be a uh, triangle but flat at one end or a different shape. But still they will have fins. It can be one fin here, it can be another fin there, here they can have fins. So that is another property. Has fins to swim through water. So here again two uses. This also helps to swim through water, turn the direction and to balance while swimming. So, main purposes. To balance as well as to swim through. Swim through means even turn around. So, for all that, the fins are important. Then you would have seen here there is this head, right? And under this head, you would have seen a very bright or maroon color structure kind of. What are those? Inside when you open this head part like that flap like structure you can see inside. Those are the gills. Now these fishes breathe through gills. So respiration through gills. How does that happen? When they are swimming in water, water goes into these gills and there is oxygen dissolved in water. You know we breathe oxygen, we inhale oxygen, we exhale carbon dioxide. The same way there is oxygen dissolved in water. Now these live in water. So when they are swimming, water goes into the gills and the oxygen that is dissolved in water is inhaled or respired by the gills. So the respiratory organ here is gills. Respiration through gills. And the other feature. Have you all seen the fish sleeping? I am sure you would have observed a fish tank. They swim around and after some time they just stand still or they just stay still. Do they close their eyes? Actually when they stay still they are kind of rusty. But they have no way of closing their eyes. Why? They don't have eyelids. So they have eye but no eyelids. Eye without lids. Without lids. So that is also there. 
it can be eyes on either side the size and the shape those can be but still they have eyes without lids why inside water it's very difficult to open and close the eyelids so they have eyes to see but they don't have eyelids so now again can you relate the properties you saw many examples for fishes we saw the shark the skate then the tuna all those different fishes even the sprats the goldfish carps all the fishes that you have in the pond or the fish tank or what you see in the marine environment the ocean and they vary from very tiny fishes to very large fishes like shark but they all have the same properties what are the properties they have invariably streamlined body then it helps this feature helps them to swim through water then the body is covered with scales they have fins has fins to swim through water and to balance while swimming then respiration through gills now these are the gills now students this is just a diagrammatic representation if you really look at the fish now the gills are covered they are not completely exposed and there you can see many layers so here i have just shown you all what those are okay but if you really look at a fish you will see how it is really respiration through gills and they possess eyes without eyelids so eyes without eyelids so they are very well adapted to living in the aquatic environment it can be marine water or fresh water so these are all vertebrates the first group of vertebrates that we have discussed did you all understand all the features okay so then i will move on to the next group so the next group under vertebrates is amphibia now this word has a meaning amphi means two so these organisms even though they live in the terrestrial environment even though they live on land they still need water for part of their life cycle that is why amphibia they need both the land and water so amphibians amphibians spend part of their life cycle in water so this is important spend part of their life cycle in water now how does that happen have you ever seen the life cycle of a frog or learnt about a life cycle of frog that you have so you know what life cycle is from the time a living organism is born after birth or after hatching so from that point until it grows to a adult and finally dies and produce before that it produce the next generation that whole cycle is known as the life cycle so if you take the life cycle now for example frog now the frogs they live on land but they lay eggs where do they lay eggs closer to a water environment and the eggs hatch once they hatch what comes out of the eggs that is tadpole they can live only in water they have adaptation to live only in water so they need to spend that particular part of the life cycle in water so that is why we call them as amphibians then these tadpoles they undergo changes and again they become the frog and they move back to the terrestrial environment and also you will see now when we say amphibia now this is like a change from the fishes now fishes were all in water now from water they are coming to the land so little by little they are also undergoing changes not only the animal what i am saying is the different groups you can see a pattern a gradual change in the development or changes in the groups so fishes were in water amphibians water and land then after that you will see the reptiles they are 
well adapted to terrestrial environment. So you can understand that change. Okay. So as examples, if we look at these animals, the frog, the toad. Why are they different or what is the main difference between them? One thing, their size is slightly different, their color is different, but they look almost the same. Toad and frog are same. Sometimes some people don't even know that they are different. They just think, okay, they are like similar organisms but different colors. But they are different. The reason is the frog prefers the water environment more. They spend more time in water or environment where there is water. Whereas the toad, they prefer the terrestrial environment. So their life cycle is no more towards the land. So they need both the land and water. They use both land and water to complete their life cycle. But the frog is more towards water, toad is more towards land. So that is also a big difference. Then if you look at the salamander. Now this salamander is also something different. Now it's different from this frog and toad. You can see the limbs and the shape, body shape, everything is different. You might, I'm saying you might, I'm sure you know, you all are very intelligent, you all know, but you might confuse this with a lizard at home. Right? Because it looks like a lizard, but it is not. This is an amphibian. So you have to remember that students. Now in a question also, when they give you pictures, they don't give pictures of animals which are very distinct. Then obviously you will be able to identify. But they might give pictures like this, examples like this, where you can get confused. But I am sure you all can understand them well and then you won't get confused. So salamander is also an amphibian. So that also need water to complete their life cycle or they spend part of their life cycle in water. Then this other one, ichthyophis. Ichthyophis. That is also, again this is also somewhat different. Now when you look at these two, they are similar. This is totally different from these two, salamander. It has appendages also, legs actually. But ichthyophis, you don't have any of those structures. It almost again looks like a worm or a snake. So they are also, you can get confused. So these two are very tricky amphibians. They are amphibians, but they are somewhat different. So you should not get confused. That's what I'm saying. Right? So these are all examples of amphibia. Frogs, toads, salamanders and ichthyophis. Now again, look at the name. Now frog, toad, salamander, normal letters. So those are the common names. But ichthyophis, it's written in Italic. So what is that name? It is the scientific name. So you have to keep that in mind. Okay? You can't forget that. Okay. So those are the examples. Now you have looked at the examples. Now look at the structure. Now they have limbs. You know the frogs, they can jump from one place to the other. Some frogs can jump and cover a very long distance. And also they sometimes walk. They jump and when they are inside water, what do they do? They swim. So they are adapted to live on land and they are adapted to live in water. So they can either jump or hop or else they can swim. So for that, if you look at this, their legs or feet, they have this web-like structure, like a membrane in between to jump as well as to swim. So here also, if you look at this, this part closely, you can identify that web-like structure. Then if you look at all their skin, now the frog, toad, salamander, ichthyophis, they are moist. They are very thin, they are moist and they have lot of 
glands. Now, if you look at the skin closely, they have lot of glands. We call it the glandular skin. So, those are some common properties. Now, why am I telling all these now? Because we are going to discuss the features. You should be able to relate the features to these organisms. Okay, that is the easiest thing. So, if we look at the features of amphibians. Now, the first one, they undergo metamorphosis. Now, metamorphosis, I will just say frog, right? That is the adult frog, the grown-up frog. You know the shape, right? Now, the frog lays eggs. Now, these eggs are like this, very tiny eggs like this. So, the eggs are of this shape, like small circles or slightly oval, tiny eggs. Those are one stage. The frog lays eggs and the eggs hatch. What did I say comes out of the egg? The tadpole. So, from here, we get the tadpole. Now, have you all seen these tadpoles? They have a body kind of like this and a small tail. Now, can they live on land? No. They need water. Now, this is the stage that needs water. So, these tadpoles, they can actually swim in water. And kind of, they are somewhat not the same, but they have similarities to fish like swimming, the shape of the body, all that. When you look at a tadpole, sometimes you can think, okay, this is a tiny fish, but it is not. So, you have to be careful. Again, you can see the transition. I told you all from fish, amphibia to reptile, the development in animals. So, this is how that happens. So, they swim very well. Then what happens is the tadpole develops into a frog. So, develops into a frog or tadpole with legs actually. With legs and then the young frog and thereafter you will get the frog. Now, if you compare, now you saw the picture of a frog, I'm sure you know what frog and toad is. So, this frog is very, very different from this tadpole. They are distinctly different. You can't actually relate a tadpole to a frog. They don't have any similarities. But they are different parts of the life cycle of an organism, of an animal, that is frog. So, this frog and tadpole are different stages of the life cycle that are very, very different, distinctly different. So, that is what we mean by metamorphosis. Metamorphosis means from the egg, the tadpole comes out, it undergoes lot of changes and then it becomes the adult animal. So, all those changes together is known as metamorphosis. So, this process. So, here is where the metamorphosis takes place. This and this is during the, uh, let's say, life cycle. So, during the life cycle, the metamorphosis, distinct change. So, they undergo metamorphosis. Is that clear now? Then they have skin that is thin, moist and glandular. Thin, I told you all. That thin skin actually facilitates their breathing. They respire through the skin also. Their skin is moist. Now see moist. So, it's always wet. If you touch the frog or toad, you might have felt that it is slimy. Even the ichthyophis, you can see that it looks kind of slimy because it's moist all the time. So, the skin is a thin skin 
it is a moist skin and those two actually facilitate respiration and also it is glandular. When we say glandular, this has two main types of glands. One is the mucus gland, the other one is the poison gland. Now mucus gland is to secrete mucus. You know what glands are, they are the uh, structures that secrete substances. So mucus is secreted so that the skin is moist. Then they secrete poison, they have poison glands to protect themselves from other animals. The predators, we have talked about predators. Not the Nidarian predators, but there are other predators. So when they come closer to the frog, when they secrete the poison, those animals, those predators move away. So these frogs are safe or the uh, toads are safe. I'm just taking the example frog because you commonly know them. But it is a common feature of amphibia. So they have skin. Skin is thin, moist and glandular. And there are no scales. We looked at the diagram before. The skin was kind of smooth. It's glandular but there were no scales. And some species use limbs for locomotion. So I showed you all the limbs also. I told you all the webbed feet. Like this we have the feet and in between there is the limb. The limb with the webbed feet. These are the limbs. They use that to jump or hop from one place to the other. And when they swim also they can use that webbed feet. So some species use limbs for locomotion. Especially the frog, toad, salamander, all those they had limbs. Can you all relate them to the Examples, the pictures, I am sure you can, you have to remember those. And then respiration is carried out by lungs through wet skin or mouth. Now three organs, one is through lungs, we also respire through lungs. So like that frogs have lungs or toads have lungs, all the amphibians they have lungs so they respire through lungs. And through their skin. So now you can understand it's a thin moist skin. So the oxygen can dissolve in that moist skin. And it can diffuse through the skin. Go through the skin. So they respire through skin. And through the mouth. Through that also they can respire. So three ways of respiration. So what are the features? Features of amphibians. Undergo metamorphosis. Skin is thin, moist and glandular. Then there are no scales in the skin. Some species use limbs for locomotion. And the limbs have these webbed feet. And respiration is carried out by lungs through wet skin or mouth. So those are the features. And the examples are toad, frog, salamander, ichthyophis. So you have to be able to relate those to the features. I am sure you can do that. So with that, now I am going to move on to the next group. So then we have the third group of vertebrates that is reptilia. Now here again you can see reptiles belong to this group. I told you all that. The group name is reptilia but we refer to the animals as reptiles. So you are familiar with the term reptiles because you see reptiles in your environment. We see lizards in the garden. We see the crocodiles. You might have seen the crocodiles. Then even the snakes. They, they are all reptiles. So reptiles belong to this group. And they are well adapted for the terrestrial environment. I told you all about that change. Water, then water and land. Now here these are well adapted for terrestrial environment. Then the example. Now here you can see tortoise. Now look at this tortoise. It has the body like this, a very tiny face there. It has a very heavy, very strong shell. And it has the 
legs, very short legs. You know the tortoise, it can walk very slowly. And whenever it is scared, if it feels there is danger in the environment, what does it do? It goes into the shell. So the shell is a protection for the tortoise. Then there is the turtle. Turtles here you can see similar animals, but you can see turtle lives in the sea, water environment. So turtles again, they have the shell, but they are, these legs are more like fins, like flippers. So they can swim. Their structure is somewhat different. These are to walk slowly, these are to swim. And still they have that small head and everything similar, but their habitats are different. So here we said they are well adapted for terrestrial environment. They, it's not mentioned that they don't live in water, but they are well adapted to terrestrial environment. Now the turtles also can come to the land. So tortoise and turtle. Then take the crocodile. Now there is no direct similarity between the crocodile and tortoise or the turtle. They are different. But obviously they all have the vertebral column and they do have similar features. Now you can see the crocodile also has legs. Now short legs and mostly even though they walk, almost their body touches the ground. So these also they walk on kind of the ground. They walk but their body is touching the ground. The abdominal area or the lower part of the body somewhat touches the ground. Now if we take the cobra, now cobra, viper, then you can see crate, python, they are all what? We call them the snakes, the different types of snakes. Now do they have legs or limbs? They don't. So what do they do? They crawl. You have seen the snake movie. But they are also reptiles. So cobra, viper, crate, python, these are examples of reptiles. Then we have the iguana. Now this is somewhat similar. Now here you can see tortoise, crocodile, iguana, even the monitor or lizard. Now they all look somewhat same. Their size is different. Lizard is very tiny. Iguana is somewhat larger. Monitor is very large. Even the crocodile is large. But they look somewhat similar. So you can see they are related. They belong to the same group. Related in the sense they belong to the same group. So you can see the iguana here. The feet even those are like somewhat short feet. Then the lizard you can see the feet. Then the monitor can you see? They also have very short legs like sometimes their body, the abdominal side, the lower part of the body tends to touch the ground when they walk. So these are all well adapted to the terrestrial environment. They can live in very dry environments. You can look at their skin, the different ways of locomotion and they live in different places of the land. So the examples are tortoise, turtle, then we have the cobra, the python, then the viper is here, the crate is here. Now I told you all, all these four, they are different types of snakes. The way they feed, the way they catch the prey, the way they move and the pattern in their body is different. So from that you can differentiate the different types of snakes. Then we have the lizard, here the lizard, the monitor there, then the iguana and the crocodile. But here also you can easily identify tortoise turtle, similar. Crocodile, iguana, monitor lizard, similarities. Then cobra, viper, python, crate, similar. So you can see that we can further classify them. We are not going into detail. You are going to do all that in your higher grades. When you learn more about biology, about animals, animal classification, but you can understand, since they had similar properties, they all come under reptilia. Since they had the backbone, they came under vertebrates. Then due to other properties, they come under reptilia. But they do have differences, so they can be further classified.
classify. Now we will see the common features. So the features of reptilia. So they possess a dry skin with scales. So you have to remember that students. Dry skin with scales. Now I'll just take the snake as an example. Now this is not the real shape of a snake, just the body shape. So this also has scales. Here the body has scales. You would have seen that they have scales. So they have scales and they have a dry skin. Why they are well adapted for terrestrial environment. So no glands. They don't have any glands at all. That's very important. So reptiles, they possess a dry skin with scales and they don't have any glands. So when we say dry skin, no glands. They also use limbs for locomotion. Now, if you can remember the crocodile, the lizard, iguana, the monitor, even the turtle and tortoise. They all have limbs for locomotion. They can either walk or they can swim, but they still have the limb for locomotion. So, in those animals, you saw the limbs. Now, but some reptiles are limbless. So, here there are many examples for you. Crocodile, monitor, iguana, lizard, turtle, tortoise, all these are reptiles with limbs. But the snakes, some reptiles are limbless. So, these are the snakes. They don't have limbs and they are well adapted for crawling. So here when we say crawling, normally you would have seen babies crawling. They crawl with their hands and legs. But the snakes don't have limbs. So they crawl with their body. You would have seen the snake going like this. Or it goes sideways. Different snakes move in different ways. But they are adapted for crawling. So how does this crawling take place? Now this body of the snake, that is the reptile, has muscles and the skin is dry and also it has scales. So with that, when they move at a certain pattern, these scales as well as the body helps in their locomotion. So they don't have limbs, so they move with their body. So for that, the scales also support. So that they don't slip away from the lamp. And don't forget they can even though they are crawling they can move very fast. The snake can move very fast. So you have to be careful. So there are some reptiles use limbs for locomotion. But some reptiles are limbless. They are adapted for crawling. Then their respiration is through lungs. So again here they inhale, respire through lungs. So all these are adaptations for the terrestrial environment. Again if we go through the features of reptilia, they possess a dry skin with scales. They have no glands are present in the skin. Use limbs for locomotion, you know the examples for that. And but some reptiles are limbless and those are the snakes. So as examples for snakes, you can give the crate, the python, rattlesnake, any viper, cobra, all these are different types of snakes. So those are all limbless and they are adapted for crawling. And the respiration through lungs. So those are the features that you have to remember student. So, so far this is what we have been doing. We looked at the examples. We saw where they live. They, then we discussed their special feature as well as their features of the different organisms. Now these are under vertebrates. So from fishes you saw. Then the amphibians. After that the reptiles or reptilia. Then we have to move on to the next group. 
What is that group? That is Arvids. So here the next vertebrate group is Arvids. That is birds belong to the group Arvids. So when we say birds, you know what birds are. So you immediately remember the birds that can fly. But there are birds that can't fly also. Some birds fly only to a short distance, a short height. Some don't fly. But most of the birds, they can fly very well. So here, if we look at the body shape and the features, they are well adapted for flying. So this is a special feature, but as I told you, there are exceptions. So they are well adapted for flying. So let's look at these examples. Swan, a very pretty bird. White color, very pretty bird, but it swims in water. But you might have seen it flying only to a short distance, adapted for flight. Owl, they can fly very well. Parrot, yes, they can fly. Then blue magpie, magpie also can fly. So for flying, what do they have? They have the wings and they have the body covered with feathers. Now these are their wings. You can see the shape, the size, color, everything is different. Here it's white color. Here you can see the wings, they are the wings here and the parrot, the green color wings, all that you can see. So they have wings for flying. And they usually have two limbs, the legs, two legs. They have two legs, you can see in all these birds. What else? Their body is covered with feathers. You might have, uh, even some of you all have one or two feathers collected by you. When the bird flies, sometimes the feather falls down, then you collect it. You have seen the feathers, right? So they are all covered with feathers, all the birds. Then what is the other thing? What is this part? Now here all these birds have this particular part. What is that? That is the beak. That is the structure that they use to feed, for feeding, for consuming their food. And you know that different birds have different shaped beaks. Do these beaks have teeth on them? No teeth. So there is no teeth, but they have beaks. They use the beak to eat their food. And depending on what they eat, the shape of the beak will be different. So those are the things that you have to observe when you are discussing or learning about aves, that is birds. So under aves, you can see birds belong to the group aves. They are well adapted for flying. Blue magpie, that is blue magpie. Then we have the swan, then the owl there and the parrot here. In addition to that, you have seen so many other birds. The hen, the cock, peacock, crow, miner, eagle, vulture, so many different bee hummingbirds, the tiny birds, ostriches, they are also birds. So there are so many types of birds. These are only a few examples. You should be able to relate them with each other. So with that, we will look at the features of aves. So here also, now I didn't show you all that before, the body is streamlined. When the bird spreads the wings and flies, you would have observed and we have already discussed what this streamlined body is. So here they have streamlined body. Lined body. So what is the purpose of streamlined body here? Broad at the middle, tapering at the ends. What is the purpose? They can fly through air. Easy to move through air. So streamlined body. Streamlined body is designed for flight. So we said the fishes have streamlined bodies. Man looked at the fish. We made boats and ships. The same way, we looked at the birds. What did we do? We made aeroplanes. Aeroplanes also have the same streamlined body so that it's easy for them to travel through air. So you know that. 
streamlined body. Then the body is covered with feathers. Feathers also you have seen, no? it has a middle like this and you know a structure like this or different shapes, different colors, different patterns, they have the feathers. So that is another special feature, feathers. Then they have limbs. Now when you look at these animals, they are actually supposed to have four limbs. And the four limbs, we say from the limbs, they have the four limbs and hind limbs. Now first I meant four, the number four. This is four limbs in front and hind limbs at the back. So normally when there are animals with four limbs, the front ones are called the four limbs and the behind are called the hind limbs. Here in birds, what happens is these four limbs, now they possess limbs for locomotion and these four limbs, they become the wings. So only two limbs are left. Those are the hind limbs. So if you really look at the bird, now they have the hind limbs, a pair of hind limbs like that. And here it will be the wings or their, yes, different shaped wings. So they have a streamlined body shape. Then the hind limbs are there, four limbs are wings and their body is covered with feathers. Those are the properties. So they do not have teeth but the beak is adapted for feeding. I will go back to the previous slide. Now here you can see, you can look at the beak here. Now this beak is to catch the fish. So somewhat pointed but flat and somewhat long. Look at the beak here. Now they have very kind of, you know, very sharp, pointed and curved beaks so that they can eat on their prey. Then look at the parrot. Now as I told you, they have also kind of broad but, you know, curved so that they can eat the fruits and nuts and all those for parrots. Then look at the blue magpie. It's pointed, very sharp at the end. So that is a different type of bee. Then say if you take the duck. Now the ducks have a long kind of you know a beak. Then if you take a hummingbird. A very thin long beak. So that they can put the beak into the flower. And they can suck the honey. So like that these animals depending on whether they feed on other Organisms, animals, if they are predators, they have very sharp, uh, curved and even their nails, the legs have very claws, very sharp claws so that they can catch the prey. So like that, they are adapted to consume other animals. But if they eat fruits and nuts too, just to bite or, you know, scrape out the uh, fruits and nuts, they have a certain shape. Then if it is a duck, to catch the fish. So like that, their beaks are adapted according to their food habit. So we are not going to go into detail for information. I told you all, all this so that you can remember when you see a bird in your environment, you can relate it to the food habit. So again, I will go back to the slide where we were discussing the features of apes. So we said they have streamlined body is designed for flight. Then the body is covered with feathers and they possess limbs for locomotion. So the four limbs are adapted as wings. So these are the four limbs and these are the hind limbs. Those are the legs. So four limbs become the wings and they do not have teeth but the beak is adapted for feeding. So beak is adapted for feeding. That is what we discussed now. And they also breathe using lungs. So they also have lungs. So they breathe in oxygen using the lungs. So those are the 
features of birds that you need to remember. Now you know very well how to remember these features. You relate them to the example, you try to understand them, then you can't forget and you won't get confused easily also. So always when you are studying, look at the example, observe the animals carefully and understand the features. So with that, I will move on to the next slide. So this is for your extra knowledge. So students, when they say extra knowledge, don't just leave them out. You need to understand that also so that actually you have knowledge. You tend to understand more about animals, the different types of animals because they are all part of our environment. Maybe they are not in the same country where we live. They, live, they are in a different place. They are in different parts of the world. But still, you need to have some knowledge about all these animals. So, this is an extra knowledge where we look at some birds that cannot fly. So, they are actually called flightless birds. I told you all at the beginning also, these are well adapted for flight. Right? That is a feature of aves, the birds. But the problem is when they get well adapted also, sometimes, now say take these birds, you can see their body is very large. So, they might be very heavy. So, they can't fly easily. Or it can be very too tiny. So, that also it can't fly. So, like that, there are various reasons why they don't fly. So, these are the flightless birds. So, remember students, although we look at features, they have common features. But there are exceptions. You have to remember that as well. So, there are some birds that cannot fly. Some examples are given below. And here if you look at the examples, immediately you know most of these birds are in other parts of the world, in different countries. So here the first one is ostrich. Now this is a special bird because this is the largest bird on earth. Largest bird. And this bird lays the largest egg. Birds lay eggs, you know, hens lay eggs like that, ducks lay eggs. So, all the birds lay eggs. And ostrich lays the largest egg. Largest bird, largest egg. So, you can imagine because it's so large, it will be very heavy. So, then it's difficult for the ostrich to fly. So, flightless bird. Normally, it is they are in uh, countries like Africa. And different parts of the world. So that is ostrich. Then you look at this cassowary. Now this, this part the face looks like something like a peacock. You have seen a peacock but the rest of the body you can see it's a large bird. Now actually it is the second largest bird. After ostrich this is the second largest bird. So this also can't fly because it's very heavy. Then look at the emu. Compared to these two, emu looks a little bit smaller. But another thing students, now I told you, ostrich is the largest bird. But when you look at the pictures, depending on how the picture was taken also, the size might vary. So don't compare the size from the given picture. Okay. So these are very large birds. Now emu is also related to these two birds. And because of that, they are Wings are not that adapted for flying. So they don't actually fly and they are somewhat heavy also. So ostrich, cassowary, emu. Then we have rhea. Rhea is again another bird. You can see all of them somewhat similar. Now he, he, their neck is also very long because they are more adapted to walking and looking. You would have seen in documentaries or any, any movies related to animals or even in the zoo sometimes you would have observed. So here you can see like they look and they walk and you know those are the things they do. They don't fly. Rhea. Then we have this one. Penguin. That is something familiar to you. I am sure as children you would have liked penguins and you know you know it's like more familiar to you. And you know the way the penguin walks. It like just walks like this. It's straight. It can't fly. It has these 
flippers they can swim but, but they can't fly birds that can't fly where do these penguins live they live mainly in the antarctic that is the hemispheres the, the polar regions where there is snow the weather is very cold so they are adapted to that kind of environment so antarctica then we have this kiwi now when you hear the word kiwi we call some native people also kiwis who are they the new zealanders new zealanders are known as kiwis why this kiwi bird is native to their country it's specific to their country in new zealand so these are all birds now this kiwi is a small bird but still it can't fly so the largest bird ostrich it lays the largest egg then cassowary emu rhea penguin and kiwi these are all birds they are vertebrates they have all the other features like birds but they can't fly so flightless birds so here also you can identify all the other properties they have the hind limbs only the legs two legs then the four limbs are made into wings then they have the feathers they have the beak all that is common but they can't fly that is the only difference here so you know the largest bird likewise you can refer up the smallest bird on earth it is the humming bird you can refer and get information related to that but that of course can fly the humming bird can fly okay so with that we have finished the discussion on birds that is the group aves so we started off with the fishes then amphibia reptilia then we came to aves so what is the next group of vertebrates that is mammalia so i will move on to mammalia now mammalia means mammals mammals have mammary glands so mammary glands are there to produce milk so therefore the young mammals feed on their mother's milk so these animals feed on mother's milk that is the special property of mammalia there are other properties but the term mammalia is because they have the mammary glands and the young feed on mother's milk so if we look at examples now he also you can see many different types of mammals and they are all mammals but they have lot of differences now we will look at the examples now first example is man that is us i have not put a picture but because you know we are all mammals so all of us come under this group we are vertebrates and we are mammals so man is a mammal then we have the rat now rat here you can see rat comes under rodents so these are a certain type of mammals you will see under mammals there are many types so rodents are rats then we have the orangutan orangutan here you can see this is orangutan then you can see the gorilla here then we have the chimpanzee here all these are what they are monkeys monkeys means they are a certain type of mammals so as i told you there are different types of mammals man is very advanced we don't call ourselves animals but we are mammals so we are a special type then we have the rats the rodents then we have the monkeys then what else do we have we have the bat now here see bats can fly early also i told you all but it is not a bird it is a mammal although they can fly they look like because they have the wings and all that but they are mammals bats are mammals then what do we have we have the whale and the dolphin now look at the whale and the dolphin where do they live they live in the sea aquatic environment and they can swim but still they are mammals so now you all can understand now some of these animals have resemblance to other groups but they all come under mammals now bat mammal that can fly 
dolphin and whale the mammals that live in the sea they can swim so they are also mammals then we have this the deer the loris loris is also coming under monkey similar to gorilla chimpanzee orangutan all those are mammals then we have the deer stag they are also similar so these are again different types of mammals so again students you can see very different types and you can see similarities also in addition to this you know the kangaroos kangaroos are known as pouch mammals because they carry their baby in a pouch like structure so like that there are many different mammals so man and all these are examples of mammalia that is group mammalia and they are known as mammals why because these animals feed on mother's milk and this mother's milk is produced by the mammary glands mammary glands okay so then look at all these animals now you can see some special common features now look at this gorilla it has an ear here look at the rat it has an ear then if you look at the deer it has a ear then here you can see the loris you can see the ear now chimpanzee the ear is very prominent so now all these animals have external ear with an ear lobe now we also have you can see the ear lobe here now this is an external outside the face that's external we have the external ear with a ear lobe so that is a property one feature specific to these mammals they all have external ears then look at their skin now you can see the skin they have so much of fur what is fur it's hair now the rat has orangutan has even the bat if you look closely it has fur or hair the deer has the loris chimpanzee you can monkeys you can easily identify now the dolphin and whale they do but they are adapted to live in water so slightly they differ okay but all of them the other animals they have hair on their skin even we have hair now on the head the hair grows long but throughout the skin we have hair so possess hair on the skin is also another feature of mammalia they have mammary glands they have hair on skin they have the external ear with an ear lobe so these are all features in addition to that they have other glands as well so now we will discuss their features so features of mammalia has mammary glands that i told you so that they can feed their young with milk and under that also different mammals have different feeding mechanisms and the way they nurture their young how they bring up their young is different now i told you all kangaroos are pouch mammals so they carry their young with them you saw in the previous picture uh, the monkey that is here you can see the orangutan it is carrying its young so like that they have different ways of looking after their young but they all feed their milk to the young that is why they have the mammary glands in addition to that so that is one property then they have another property they have two other glands the sweat glands you know that because obviously you sweat especially when the weather is warm it's hot outside we sweat a lot that is possible because our skin has sweat glands then there is another one sebaceous gland the sebaceous gland is the gland that keeps our skin somewhat oily now some of you all can have oily skin all the time your skin is oily some of you all have very dry skin some of you all have normal skin but we need to have a certain amount of this oiliness that is due to the sebaceous gland so if that is there are only the waxy kind of substance that is produced by the sebaceous gland that is needed for our 
skin. Then we have hair on skin. And you know the advantage on a very cold day. Uh, you would have felt that the hair becomes erect and then you feel a bit warmer. So hair is very useful to us. Then hair. And then the external ear with ear lobe. So this particular ear lobe I showed you all the external ear. Ear, this is the ear lobe. The shape can vary a little bit. Now this is the ear lobe of a man. Now if you take a rabbit, it has very, you know, like this. They have very large ears. Then you would have seen the dogs. They have different shapes, ear shapes. The cats, you know, like a triangle-like shape, like that. They all have different types of ear lobes, but still... They all have the external ear that is outside with ear lobe. And also they use lungs to breathe. Now so far we have been discussing all these organisms. And you have seen now here the mammals, before that the birds, before that the reptiles. They all use lungs to breathe. So that is a feature that is there in many of the animals. So if they ask you to write features that are specific to mammals, then you can say mammary glands, the sweat glands, sebaceous glands, the hair present on skin, then the external ear with ear lobes, all those are special properties. So these are special or specific properties specific to mammals, only to mammals. But Breathing with lungs is common to many of the vertebrates. So that is a feature but not a special or specific feature of mammals. So with that students, now I have come to the end of discussion on the groups that come under vertebrates. So did you all understand how these animals are classified? We started off by classifying them as invertebrates and vertebrates. Then we discussed all the groups under invertebrates. What are those groups? Try to recall the names. The Nidarians. Then we had the Annelids. Nidaria, Annelida. And then the Mollusca, that is the Mollusk. And Arthropoda, Arthropods. You know the difference. If it is the group name. Nidaria, Annelida, Mollusca and Arthropoda. But when we refer to the animals, how do we, how do we call them? The Nidarians, Annelids, Mollusks and Arthropods. Those are the invertebrate groups. Why? Because they don't have a backbone. They don't have a vertebral column. Backbone is the vertebral column. So they, they don't have that. Then we came to the Vertebrates, animals with a backbone or a vertebral column. What were they? The pieces or fishes, amphibia or amphibians, then the reptilia which contains reptiles, then aves, the birds and now mammalia where you get the mammals. And you saw the different types of mammals and their features. Did you all understand all this clearly? So, if you are given a picture of a certain animal, will you be able to identify? How do you do that? You have to look at the picture carefully and try to recall all the features. That is why I told you, always relate the features to the examples. Then it's easy for you. Okay. So, with that, now I am going to move on to the next slide where we have an assignment so collect some pictures of mammals, collect information about them, prepare a booklet allocating one page for each animal. So consider about the cover page, forward contents and acknowledgements. So here you are going to learn to make a booklet. Earlier we saw how to make an insect box. Now here a booklet. So here it's basically the mammals. So I told you there are many different types of mammals. We talked about the rodents. Then I said the monkeys, man. Then all the other primates. There are different groups. So all those 
then the whale and the lolfin fin which live in water, the bats which can fly, so like this then I mentioned the kangaroos which are known as pouch mammals, so like that there are many different types of mammals. So you can easily collect information. So again you will understand when you go to collect information how many different types of mammals are there. Even in your environment you might not have noticed them sometimes. But when you go to collect information you will understand more. You will get a lot of knowledge. So here again what you need to do is you need to take either A4 papers or you can take a book and you can either allocate one page or both sides two pages for each animal. Then you have to collect information about mammals. So as we discussed before there are many different mammals. You can have one page for one mammal or two pages like that. It depends on the information you collect. Then you can paste a picture, you can include animals like lions, tigers, elephants, so many different mammals. So everything can be included here and then you have to have a cover page. The first page, cover page where you give a nice title and you can say done by, you can write your name, then the forward, the introduction what you are going to do, why you are making this or what is your aim, all that. Then you give a contents. You have to label the number of the number, the pages and you have to say okay then if the first one is for say lion, number one, page number one for lion. Then the second one for bat, page number two for bat so that you can easily refer up the mammals. So like that you have to make your booklet. Then what is this acknowledgement? Now this information only you can't collect the information. You can refer the internet but that also you need help. You can refer books then for that also someone might have to help you. Then there are people who can give you information to collect information, to collect pictures. You need to need the support of your family, siblings, teachers, friends. So you have to acknowledge all of them. So that is why you need to include the acknowledgement. So by doing all that you can make a nice booklet on mammals. So that is an assignment that you have to do. Okay. So you have understood what mammals are. You can do this assignment. So with that I have completed the lesson. Now I am going to discuss the summary with you all. The summary. So this is what we have discussed so far. There is a vast diversity. This is where we started. Vast diversity. Lot of animals. So there is a vast diversity among animals in the environment. Animals with a backbone or vertebral column are known as vertebrates. The two terms, the main two groups that you need to understand. So animals with a backbone or vertebral column are known as vertebrates and animals without a backbone or vertebral column are known as invertebrates. So two main groups. Then considering the common features, invertebrates can be classified into different groups. The Nidaria, Annelida, Mollusca and Arthropoda are some groups of invertebrates. So remember these some groups we didn't discuss everything only some groups. Then considering the common features vertebrates can be classified into different groups as pieces, amphibia, reptilia, aves and mammalia. So for each group you need to know where they live, the examples, the features and for invertebrates you were given the body form of each animal. So if you are given that diagram, you should be able to label the parts. And all the groups, you should know the examples. And when you are given the diagram or the picture of an animal, you should be able to identify them. Some are very common. You know them very well, no confusion. But some are specific. They had resemblance to other groups. So you need to understand them clearly and identify them properly. So that is what you need to understand and learn from the lesson.
So after you study the lesson, what do you do? You study it properly, listen to the discussion, clear all your doubts. After that, you have to practice answering questions. So that is what I will be doing after this. You can watch that in the next video. So with this, I have finished the discussion on lesson.